गुड मॉर्निंग दिस इज ए लैप्रोस्कोपिक कॉलेज सिस्टेक्टोमी वीडियो दिस कंप्लीट वीडियो इज अनएडिटेड एंड अनकट देर आर लॉट ऑफ डिमांड दैट द पीपल दे वॉन्ट टू सी द अनएडिटेड वीडियो दैट शुड बी फुल लेंथ एंड विदाउट एनी एडिटिंग विदाउट एनी कट इन द रियल टाइम तो दिस वीडियो वी आर डिमोस्ट्रेटिंग द कम्प्लीट फुल लेंथ हेयर the harmonic scalpel is used and we have also used the misra's knot for the ligation of the cystic artery and cystic duct cystic duct was ligated here this is the left hand instrument which is holding the hartsman pouch and the right hand has a harmonic this silicon jaw of the harmonic if you will keep towards the gall bladder then any vibration cannot transmit to the cystic duct or the gall bladder and there will no any chances of the thermal conduction or injury so vibrating jaw of the harmonic should be visible here we are just dissecting at the level of the body of the gall bladder the posterior peritoneum and there is minimal adhesion which is separated right now this pedicle is looking pretty thick and slowly we have to skeletonize and we need to make the complete dissection and thorough skeletonization of the cystic duct and cystic artery now this is the anterior surface here we can see little more traction was given to the fundus Now with the atraumatic grasper, we are trying to feel any stone there. And there was no stone, but it was a little dilated, so we are trying to feel if there is any stone. Then you can do the milking of that stone towards the fundus. Here the peritoneum is a little bit dissected towards the gall bladder. This is a good practice. Again, the same thing will be done in the anterior aspect. You can give little anterolateral traction. This is just to feel the stone. A stripping technique of the harmonic is very good because once it vibrates at 55,500 vibrations per second, then after breaking of the hydrogen bond, it forms a plane of dissection, and that's why it is a good dissector. Actually, it is dissector of the choice for me generally, but it is individual choice. Many people they like to do with the help of the hook. or the spatula or the scissors here it is very important that the vibrating tip should be visible and silicon should be behind otherwise there may be bleeding this is a good fibrous tissue only is separated we have not increased any speed of this video also this is a real time with you the total surgery time is 20 minutes here 
just the voice hand add on was done later if you will open and close the jaw of the harmonic repeatedly then you have the limited tactile feedback to find out the texture of the tissue while you are doing a stripping So again we have to give the anterolateral traction and that will give you the exposure of the posterior peritoneum here. Window should be formed generally in my practice I prefer to make the posterior window first. And what we see that mouth of the elephant that Ganesha's head and then we create at the label of the body of the gallbladder now this is the posteriorly it is dissected completely which you can see now the calot triangle has to be defined At this point it is better to use Maryland because harmonic because of having the little blunt tip the making a window in between the cystic and cystic artery and duct is little difficult if you will keep the Maryland and if you will open the jaw of the Maryland in the line it is easy so it should be in the line of the cystic duct and cystic artery and just you can define here slowly by opening the jaw you can make a window we have to also make it sure that it should be properly skeletonized completely open jaw of the Maryland is approximately 2.2 cm in the medium jaw size of the Maryland and here this is open now you can see this is the cystic duct of course some adhesions are still there so that can be skeletonized again harmonic is taken so that proper calots will be visualized now we can see this is the cystic duct here a little more tissue which is completely skeletonized although it may not be necessary but just for academic purpose we can see here this is cystic duct these are little more adhesions posteriorly which you can separate now here is the cystic artery little more skeletonization of the artery the colored triangle is defined as medially common hepatic duct laterally cystic duct and superiorly the cystic artery and which we can see here very nicely both the windows are formed And this is the entire posterior separation which we can see so ideally you can define the calories this way this is the cystic artery here cystic duct and this is common hepatic duct this is cystic cystic duct and now both the windows are nicely skeletonized although the clipping is very easy but generally tying a knot is 
good and you can tie the extra corporeal melgers knot or you can tie the extra corporeal misra's knot over the cystic duct advantage of tying the knot is that you have the minimum chances of the this uh, cati stone or cystic duct tip stone you can see the common hepatic duct also is little tented here so you have to relax time to time at a time when you are tightening so we will take the extra corporeal knot here the time is taken to prepare the vicryl number 1 and feeding the vicryl into the bandarka knot pusher will be used here and number 1 vicryl so this is just a waiting time for the knot to come although we can perform the harmonic and the clipless collis collis cystectomy is also done in which we don't need to apply any clip or any knot even the some of the articles has been published which says that the harmonic is safe even if you will apply over the cystic duct but in my personal choice at least one knot should be there now this is the vicryl which is coming and you can feed it and then it has to be taken other side even if, when we perform the single port collis cystectomy at that time also using the vicryl is a good idea and the tying the knot is always better and in my opinion for any tubular structure like cystic duct cystic artery renal artery splenic artery extra corporeal knots are much better than the intra corporeal and here it is taken and now you can keep one instrument behind so that there should not be any shearing effect and then the other end of the vicryl will be taken out and you can tie the knot during tying the knot one assistant will keep the finger in between so that the gas should not leak because we will use 5 to 10 reducer here and then you can tie the misra's knot or melgers knot some people they use rodders also that is extra corporeal for continuous structure this is the time taken in the tying the knot and this part also we have not edited so it's a complete continuous shot and once the knot is tightened now you can push it with the help of the knot pusher two reducers has to be used here one is 10 to 5 another 5 to 3 care should be taken that over traction should be avoided especially for the artery and now this knot is ready of course it is good because one assistant is holding the finger there over the reducer so that vicryl you cannot pull it more this is the job of the camera person that he will check care that excessive traction is not given when the surgeon is busy tying the knot now configuration is melgers knot is 211 misra knot is 111 and with the third 21 and again third so these are the configuration of the extra corporeal knot which you can tie and you have to slip it once with the finger and now it is ready here this is the knot pusher coming and slowly you can make it uh, smaller you should try to avoid going directly there at the level of the structure where you want first you should bring the knot smaller and then you should go to the structure where you want to tie in the beginning only if you will go it won't be good you should negotiate it at this point traction should be avoided we can see here that there is no any traction given 
and then you let the knot itself go to the junction because by default the knot itself will go to the narrowest area and it is very secure it is tightened and now it is done one knot is more than sufficient and then you can pull the knot pusher out and by default it goes to the narrow area even in the tented CVD it does not take the CVD there now the by the side of this suture the scissors has been drawn and now it is done now we will cut the cystic duct with the harmonic the idea is that if you will use the harmonic you do not have to tie the another knot or another clip because it will seal and there will be no leaking of the cystic duct most of the time if it leaks you can apply the clip or you can catch the portion where it is leaking by the left hand last spread so now this is the harmonic coming before that this is the cystic artery which has been clipped this is cystic artery and which is clipped only one titanium clip we have applied here although according to book if you will apply three it is good but because here we are using harmonic so it will reinforce the clip also now this is duct when you are cutting it you should release any traction let it be loose so that the protein will coagulate and the elastin and collagen will seal together and now this is duct is cut and then the artery is also separated and it is done now you can hold it at the place where you have cut by the left hand instrument so that there will be no any oozing and there is no bile leak and then you can continue your dissection with the anteromedial and anterolateral traction and slowly the entire gallbladder can be separated from the liver so anteromedial and anterolateral entro traction have to be given and this is now anteromedial traction where the neck this is anterolateral traction a good areolar plane has to be ideally maintained if you are too nearer to the gallbladder then there will be little chance of perforation and if you are too nearer to the liver there may be little bleeding we should take care that when you are dissecting and reaching towards the fundus the assistant who was giving the traction over the fundus should be careful not to penetrate into the diaphragm here the light cable of the 30 degree telescope if you will keep it down it will be very useful here the we are guiding the ass assistant to put the light cable down and now the vision is good because it is showing you up and then slowly you can see the areolar plane better this is again anteromedial traction again anterior traction and then slowly anterolateral traction so this way you can completely separate the gallbladder from the gallbladder plane laparoscopic college cystectomy is a gold standard nowadays and in the experienced hand the complication rate has recently been dramatically reduced previously it was CVD injury was approximately 0.5 percent whereas it is 0.1 percent in the open surgery but in the recent data which we have published in the World Association of Laparoscopic Surgeon Journals that after the better training facility available now the complication rate of the laparoscopic cholecystectomy has reached the same as of the open surgery that is approximately 0.1 percent that we have published in our journal that is the world journal of laparoscopic surgery and I am fortunately the chief editor of that and that publication has gone through my one of the student and he has done a very hard work 
to publish that data and the credit goes to the institute who has given now much better training and now the surgeons have developed the skill some credit goes to the instrument companies also who has started making a beautiful energy sources good trocars good cannulas better high definition now images are there so that gives you the much better practices now this is last part and here the college sectomy done now you should try to have one simple claw forceps and then while you are holding the neck of the gall bladder with the claw forceps we should always take care that it should not have transverse arrest we should try to hold at the part where it has been cut so that it should must be remain longitudinal here this is the claw forceps coming you can catch it and then neck of the gall bladder can be pulled into the cannula and then entire cannula can be taken together now in this there was multiple stone and the multiple big stones were there so now after shucking it you can cut the neck you can tap it little bit so that the floating neck of the mesh will come out and then this is just a tapping so that it can be taken out and then you can take the ovum forceps and slowly you can pull the all the stone out during taking the stone out you have to surround it with this sponge so that it should not touch the wound and the care should be taken although many people they dilate that skin incision there but generally i don't like to dilate it because the patient has paid for minimal access surgery so we should spend some time to evacuate it by the ovum forceps you can give a small nick at the neck of the gallbladder this is the ovum forceps and one by one you can take all the big stones out once the maximum number of the stone will come out then slowly it will collapse and then it will be easy care should be taken that excessive force should not be applied otherwise at this point also sometime gall bladder ruptures and then it will make your surgery messy so the patience is a key in laparoscopic surgery if you want to become faster you will be slower so here it is slowly the stone has to be taken there were multiple stone that's why you can use the endo bag also that's a very good idea but of course the cost effectiveness is one of the factor why we have to be careful although americans generally they use the endo bag routinely the purpose is that it will not contaminate the port wound and the metastasis can be minimized but the incidence of this type of gall bladder this is very less we also use if it is not looking good fibrotic and bad then in our practice also we are using the endo bags sometime we make the endo bag of the gloves here you can see still many stones are there and with the ohm forcep all the stones are crushed out and slowly the gall bladder will be taken of course it is time taking job but it will do so thank you very much for watching this video and for your patience thank you